Okay. It looks like we are live. How is everyone doing today? Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe Creative Cloud. And for today, for today, for today's brief live stream, we're going to be talking about, again, we're back from NAB and some of the new features, diving a little bit deeper into some of the features um, that we've added today, specifically to Adobe Audition. That's what we're going to be talking about. Um, and a lot of these are sort of based around uh, dialogue, uh, updates. Sorry, I'm reading comments and speaking at the same time. Brain is not multitasking. A lot of updates based around ADR and voiceover workflows that I think you're really going to dig. And yes, new updates to Adobe Audition as of about two weeks ago. And then I'm also going to show you a feature that's been in there for a while called Auto Speech Alignment, which really just plays directly into this, this same series of workflows. So if you're doing any kind of dialogue replacement or using Audition as your post-audio DAW for laying back audio to video um, or resyncing audio to video or music creation, whatever it may be, these new features will really help assist you in doing that and just allow you to be a little bit more um, efficient in the process. So as always, thank you for joining me on Periscope, on uh, Facebook, on YouTube as well. A couple quick hellos here and then we're going to get right into it. Oba, Frank, what is up? Waki Hamza, hello. Thomas Benner, how are you? Sandy Chu, good morning. John Archer. Abbas Omar from Kenya, very nice to see you today. Tyson Murray, how's it going? All right. Looks like we've got some people chiming in. Mikey186, how are you doing? We've got Barat from Turkey. Mikey saying he remembers, remembers Sound Booth. <laughs> you are one of few. Uh, <laughs> that's going way back. That's like, that's, uh, I want to say that's about 10 years ago when that still existed. That was an interesting app back in the day. Do you remember the louder button? That was one of the big features there. Okay, cool. So, uh, hey, what's up, Waki from Morocco? All right, we're going to get right into it because, like you all, I've got places to go, people to see, and things to do. That's actually not entirely true. Uh, hey, hey, Des, what is happening? Okay, so here we are in Adobe Audition. Now, unfortunately, today I didn't get to uh, record all of... Uh, new content today. I was hoping to record new content like I did yesterday for the content aware stream that we did in After Effects. I just didn't get time this morning. A lot of, a lot of business meetings and things. So, oh, thank you so much, Mikey. <laughs> Big fan. All right. So, uh, and hello, David presenter. So you're going to be seeing some familiar content. Sorry about that, but that's okay. It still helps us illustrate what the feature is. The first one, <laughs> number one is punch and roll. Concept here is an easier, more efficient punch-in. Anybody who works in audio knows what the punch-in is. We're not going to go into the details of that. The difference now is that you effectively have a much simpler ability to not only punch in, um, there's also a new pre-roll counter which allows the punch-in to be just much more effective. You don't have to make selections anymore. But more importantly, as you after you punch in, you can continue to keep on rolling. You can stop, you can wind back, you can punch again, replace sections, choose the best takes, and then merge everything into one seamless take. So it's just a much easier way if you're doing vocals for a music recording. Again, if you're doing voiceover and just reading some copy, or if you're doing dialogue replacement, it's a much more elegant way um, and much better punch-in than we used to have. We've always had punch-in, and effectively you could always punch in and keep recording. It was just, it was messy. It was just kind of messy. So now it's super streamlined, really easy, and uh, I'm gonna need to get in headphones for this. So here's a piece uh, from a film called Century, created by California filmmaker Mike Burton. And there's some voiceover that I wanted to lay over top of this, which was actually his original voiceover. So I'm going to do that by playing back the video here. And I've got this Punch VO track enabled for recording. And you can see the very mic that I'm talking on now is now feeding the multi-track here. So I'm going to start playing this back and I'm going to start doing the voiceover. And then effectively what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mistake so I can kind of show you how this all works. Now, before we even get started with this, let's go down to the record button here because here's where you're gonna see some of the options. I'm gonna take you through two quick options that you'll want to enable before you begin. If you right click, control click on the record button, you'll now see that there's the sort of classic instant record mode and then the timed record mode, which has been there forever. And then this new one, which is punch and roll mode. So if you're going to be doing any kind of punch in or again, dialogue replacement, you can just enable this feature straight away. All right. Now, additionally, if you're going to be doing anything against video, you probably want to be able to see 
time code and other things. So if you're not already seeing time code in the panel here, with the video panel in focus, let's right click, control click, and let's go into video preferences. All right, now first and foremost, here's where you can enable your time code, all right? Resizing it, adjust background opacity, the position of where it is. This is very cool for ADR workflows in particular. If you're, um, if you're, if you've got like a cue sheet or something with all the dialogue, it might likely be referencing media time code, the original media time code from from whence it came. So you can swap between session and media time code. Um, just kind of a nice feature there. The other thing you're going to want to do is under playback and recording in preferences, you'll now see that there is a punch and roll preference. You can set a pre-roll duration, which I typically will set to around three seconds here. This is also going to give you a little timer if you enable this display pre-roll countdown timer. And inside the video panel, you'll just see a three, two, one, and you'll see a little flash of light indicating that you are punched in, okay? Uh, I was talking about this at NAB. Anybody remembers, I mean, I came, I started in the analog days and then the very beginning of digital as well. And anybody remembers there was this very specific this, this finger motion to punch and you almost had to like retract your hand quickly. And then as we got into digital tape, you know, it was, it was so accurate, but you had to be, you had to be even a little more precise, but you could actually punch on the beat of things. This is something which nobody really does anymore, unless you're, you know, working off of old tape machines and such, but it was a skill <laughs> and it was something I was very good at back in the day. Um, but uh, as were many, not like it was super difficult, but it was, it was just, you know, and different tape machines reacted differently. You had to kind of feel the timing, right? Mechanical things. You had to, you had to feel the gears, feel the buttons. Um, of course, we don't have to do that anymore. So let's get started, all right? So I'm gonna go into record mode here. I'm gonna let this play a couple of seconds and I'm going to start narrating and then I will effectively stop, wind back and replace a section that I just spoke and then we're gonna get into some of the punch and roll options. Here we go. When you're young, you don't think about goals. Because in fact, just getting up in the morning, that's a... Okay. So I didn't want to say because in fact or whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, how do we now punch in and continue rolling? All right. All you have to do now is wind back to where you want it to be. Okay. In this case, I'm going to redo that whatever it was that I said there and just keep on moving. So I don't have to do anything at this point. If I'm in punch and roll mode, I can simply click record now, which by the way, you can see uh, there's also, there is a predetermined keyboard shortcut for that, which is shift and space bar, and it'll automatically go into record. And now what you'll see is when I do that, inside the video panel, you're going to see a countdown, three, two, one, that's based on the amount of pre-roll time that you set, and then a flash, and then we're into recording mode. Here we go. Oh, and incidentally, I, I don't know if I'm three seconds back. You know what, let me change that time just so we can hear a little bit of what I said. Um, obviously, the idea is that you hear yourself in advance of the punch-in, and the benefit there, naturally, is that you can speak in the same tone, right, in the same level, with the same type of cadence, all to create a consistent voiceover. So I'll just make this a little bit louder so it punches through, although it's probably okay. And let's go for it. Because just waking up in the morning, that's kind of a goal. Or maybe getting on your bike and not falling off. That's a goal. Okay, so I'm happy with that second take, but the that's a goal bit, not so happy with. That has to be, there's gotta be a lot of emphasis right there. And I'm gonna make this a little bit louder so we can hear the, the pre-roll voiceover. So here's where this gets really interesting because now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I really nail that's a goal. So I might have to do a, a couple of takes with this. So I wanna go into the keyboard shortcut editor here because we don't have a predefined keyboard shortcut for this, but a function that you will likely use and something that uh, I found very useful is this keyboard shortcut here called punch again, right? So again, commonly in music, uh, if you're gonna be punching in a piece of a vocal, you know, a lot of times you would you, you would just do it live. Now, as we got into the digital days, you could actually set the punch in at specific time code locations, and this was and then this was all automated. The idea being that you're going to replace that exact section at that exact moment in time, 
And it's, again, just going to allow you to have this kind of seamless delivery. Well, if you're gonna be doing that, rather than having to replace the cursor, you can simply use this punch again function, which you can see here that I assigned to, what is that, shift, shift option P. Is that what I did? Yeah, shift option P, all right. Yep, shift option, uh, shift option, shift option P, right. <laughs> you can see I already pre-assigned it there. So you can find any free key here and assign this shortcut. I would recommend doing that. And how do you search for it? You type in punch. How do you add the shortcut? If you didn't have it already, you just click into the shortcut space. All right, it'll become available to you. you could, I could delete this right here. All right, and let's just re-add it. So I'll type in there, shift option P, and now you can see I've added that shortcut, okay? This one's really useful. You know, I'm a shortcut, uh, I, I, don't, I don't use a lot of shortcuts because I just can't seem to retain them for whatever reason. Um, but this one is really useful, especially if you're gonna be doing voiceover or ADR, and I do a ton of voiceover recording, so this one is great. Click okay, we're right where we wanna be. Again, I can always zoom in a little just to make sure that I'm sort of right on top of it. A lot of, some people had asked me, well, do you need to be, you know, right at the precise beginning of the waveform? I mean, if it's voiceover, that's not tied to time code necessarily, no. If it's dialogue replacement, well, sure, you wanna be where you need to be, but then again, um, you know, you might be cutting off the end of something else, but that's okay because we have crossfades and lots of other things to smooth those transitions. The key is that, you know, place it where you want it to be and you can always finesse the in and out later if there is any kind of little click or anything like that. But as this is kicking in automatically, you don't even have the, you know, sometimes you would actually capture the, the sound of the punch if it was done at the mix desk. You're not gonna have any of that here because it just automatically goes into record. So with that in mind, it's in record. We're hearing my playback, let's do it. And I'm saying that's a goal. Oh, and sorry, no, I wanna do the punch again. Sorry, we're gonna start right from here, okay? Here we go. Or maybe getting on your bike and not falling off. That's a goal. Okay, so I wanna do it from that exact spot again. Shift, option P. Or maybe getting on your bike and not falling off. That's a goal. One more time, shift, option P. Or maybe getting on your bike and not falling off. That's a goal. Everything is so much simpler when you're young, but it doesn't stay that way. <laughs> this is getting very deep. Okay, so I punched multiple times and then I rolled <laughs> or kept rolling or rolled on. Hello, Elizabeth Losa. So now it gets really cool because at this point I can right click, control click here and I can choose the best take, which in fact was the last one. So that's this one here, VO004, all right? So I could put them back in. So let's say I wanted to check this one out, all right? Or I could, you know, go back to this one here and audition this one. I can listen to all the various takes, choose the one I want. And again, I could continue to roll here or this is where I love this new feature now. So once you've got your seamless voiceover done as you like it, choose my selection tool. I can now select all of these clips because yes, as you would imagine, each one of these, as you can see, these are individual clips. So we haven't destroyed anything. Everything is still there. Everything we've recorded is still all there. And every time you punch, it makes a new file, which again, in terms of timing and fixing any audio glitches, it's not an issue. They're all separate files but I don't wanna to have to treat and process this separately. I'd like to merge this into one. Typically you would comp or bounce this to a new track. You don't have to do that with this function. Now when you select these, I can right click and simply choose merge clips. And this creates one single voiceover file for us. All right, I'll just take a quick listen to that. When you're young, you don't think about goals. Because just waking up in the morning, that's kind of a goal. Or maybe getting on your bike and not falling off. That's a goal. Everything is so much simpler when you're young. Okay, right? Get the idea. So, and now if we were to go into the 
uh, the edit view here, the waveform view, you can see it's one continuous file. So if I wanted to, you know, do whatever needs to be done on here, some amplification, maybe some denoising in this case, because the studio is a little loud with the streaming machine running, you know, we could we could do all of that. Also, of course, I've got bleed from the microphone here. Um, you get the idea. So punch and roll, a very welcomed addition to this latest uh, update to Adobe Audition. Okay, let's go ahead and get out of here and talk about uh, actually, let's do let's do this one next because this is really sort of directly related. Now this feature is not new. This has been in here for a while. Um, however, it's still very undiscovered and it's something that is extremely useful, particularly for ADR. And in this exact example where, let's say I was actually replacing spoken dialogue, once you do it, once you get the dialogue performance just right, maybe it's a little off. Maybe there's a section or a phrase or a line that it's the delivery you want, but it didn't exactly match the timing of the original reference audio. So you mess around with trying to sync things together or you just do it over again. Well, we have a function that will allow you to take your original reference audio and your replaced audio and automatically synchronize them together using automatic speech alignment. So this is a piece with my uh, collaborator and friend, Fuzzy Island. We shot this a couple of years ago, and I just wanted to do a test by actually replacing his voice with mine. So here is the original. Take a quick listen. My name's Fuzzy Island, and uh, I play music, I write music, I write stories, tell stories. Uh, I guess I'm just an old storyteller, guitar player, Singer songwriter, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, I'm just amplifying this a little bit for you. My name's Fuzzy Island, and uh, I. Okay. So you can hear the original audio there. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new track, and I believe it's going to be a mono audio track. All right. Is this file a mono? Yes, it is. All right. And we'll call this JSON ADR. Now I don't need an input or anything because I've already I've already done the ADR here, and here it is. All right, I'm going to slide this and attach this exactly where the other was. So let me play this back for you now, and you'll just hear that my timing. I mean, it's it's off. You can also just see it visually, right? I mean, you don't. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can just see even if we're talking a couple of. Samples or frames. I, I play, play music, music, I write music, music I write stories, stories, tell stories. Uh, uh, I, guess I guess I'm just an old storyteller, story guitar, guitar player, player singer, songwriter, I suppose. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so not not real accurate. <laughs> it's okay. You know, if we were to turn Fuzzy off and just play back mine. Name's Fuzzy Island, and uh, I play music, I write music, I write stories, tell stories. Uh, I guess I'm just an old... Yeah, I mean, it's the beginning is okay. It gets a bit off towards the middle. Now, of course, this was studio voiceover, so what would we do to treat this? Well, we would EQ it a little bit differently because it was done on a studio mic. We'd add in some of that room tone that's there to kind of put him back in the room. Lots of things we could do to tweak that. We're not worried about that right now. We're just talking about synchronizing these two dialogue pieces together. So here's how this works. I'm going to select our two pieces of dialogue, the reference and my ADR. I'm going to come up to the clip menu and I'm going to choose automatic speech alignment. Okay, let's go ahead and choose that. And you'll see this is a really simple dialogue, reference clip. So this is the reference. This is the one that it's going to be um, aligning against. So you'll have a drop down here depending upon what you've selected. In this case, it's this audio. It wants to reference a channel. Um, it's it's actually mono, just dual channel mono, i.e. just basically a stereo, but not recorded in stereo, just each side has the exact same content. So we can leave the reference channel at the default. Then you can see the unaligned, and it already knows, it assumes that's ADR01. I've only selected two clips here. So that's the clip we're trying to align to the reference here. And that's mono, so there's no reference channel necessary. And then we have alignment options. So there's three here. Now, like all things with all of our applications, um, each of these will give you a slightly different result. The default, I believe, is tightest alignment. There's also balanced alignment and stretching, and then smoothest stretching. 
So what this is doing is it is actually performing a, 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 a stretch against the reference. So it's actually stretching and adjusting the time, the duration of your dialogue based on analyzing attack transients in the waveform, maintaining the same pitch, okay? So, and again, depending upon how off you are, it may have to tweak it quite a bit. So that's where something maybe like smooth is stretching. If you're hearing weird stretch artifacts, might be better. Balanced alignment, again, sometimes is just really wonderful. Let's try the default first. Now you've got two additional options here. Reference clip is noisy. That's in there because sometimes if the, say, let's say the original pre-ADR take is outside, so it's a boom mic and there's there was wind or something, this, this checkbox just allows the algorithm to work a little bit harder to really identify those transients and consonant sounds and, again, those waveform attacks so it can match it more accurately. If, there's, if, if your track is otherwise not noisy or if it's just room tone, you don't need to check that box. All right. That's really for sort of extreme uh, examples. And then the last one here is to add the align clip to a new track. So let's go ahead and click OK. And that's it. We're done. As quickly as that. So now let's mute my original. And let's go ahead and play these two together and just take a listen. Name's Fuzzy Island, and uh, I play music, I write music, I write stories, tell stories. Uh, I guess I'm just an old storyteller, guitar player, singer, songwriter. All right. So here, let's go ahead and turn off Fuzzy. And uh, maybe just to simulate this just a little because it's so dry, I'm just going to place a little bit of ambience on this. All right, maybe something like Room Ambience 2. It's a little bigger, a little more reflection here. No damping, a little bit of diffusion. Let's just take a listen real quickly. Name's Fuzzy Island, and uh, I play music, I write music, I write stories, tell stories. Uh, I guess I'm just an old storyteller. Okay. Name's Fuzzy Island, and uh, I play music, I write music, I write stories, tell stories. Uh, I guess I'm just an old storyteller, guitar player, singer songwriter, I suppose. Okay. So that was pretty good. I'm hearing a little bit of artifacting in there. So maybe the balanced stretching and alignment is the better way to go. All right. So let's go ahead and try that. So what, what I'm going to do. Just going to move this track up here. Let's mute that one. Let's take these. Once again, I'll select the two. Go up to the clip menu. Auto speech alignment. Let's choose balanced alignment and stretching. Okay, everything is good. Click OK. Bzz, there it is. All right, do the same thing here. I'm just going to add a little bit of reverb. Again, it needs more tweaking to make it really sound like it's in the scene. That room tone uh, would be very beneficial here. But we're not worried about that for this particular stream. Just give us a little something to work with. Let's play it back. Let's go ahead and mute this. I'm going to mute Fuzzy. Let's hear our new one. And I'm going to zoom in so we can see it, okay? Name's, Name's Fuzzy, Fuzzy Island. Island. Oh, whoops. Sorry. I still have the other one unmuted. Here we go. And let's play it back. Name's Fuzzy Island. And uh, I play music. I write music. I write stories. Tell stories. Uh, I guess I'm just an old storyteller, guitar player, Singer-songwriter, I suppose. Okay. Pretty cool. Really easy, right? And in seconds. Okay. So the idea here is that, again, you can do your dialogue, get it as close as you need it to be, and then you can use automatic speech alignment to really fine-tune pieces that are maybe slightly out. By the way, you don't have to do it across the entire file. If I were to cut this, let's say that, you know, just this section here, uh, needed some help, all right, between these little bits right here. So what I would likely do is make a selection across those and only select those pieces, all right? And then I could align just these two right here, all right? It doesn't have to be an entire file. It can just be a section, all right? So it's really fast to process. Um, does it nail it every time? No. Sometimes you still need to do a little manual tweaking? Possibly. Remember, there's a third option there. Sometimes the smooth stretching um, is just what you need to, and that eliminates any kind of weird artifacting as well, if you're getting that. Maybe the alignment is perfect, but the stretch sounds weird. Try the smooth stretch option, and that goes a long way. Okay, 
Last thing I'm going to show you here is something which, um, like many of our features that get added into the application, came directly from user feedback, um, and that was the addition of AutoDuck for ambient sound. So hold on, I'm just going to open up my Essential Sound panel. Now, uh, last year, I'm trying to remember exactly when we added auto ducking. Um, yeah, I guess it was in the October release, or maybe it was a year ago at NAB. I think it's a year ago. We added auto ducking for music and dialogue. If you're unfamiliar with that, it's when you have dialogue speaking and then you put music underneath and you want the music to lower in volume when the person is talking. Traditionally, you would do this with keyframes or you, you know, if you know about audio and audition or elsewhere, you could use something like a sidechain uh, compressor, which is effectively what auto ducking is doing to uh, drop the level, attenuate the music. Well, we added that as an Adobe Sensei powered function in the essential sound panel. So the way it works is you tag your media. In this case, my dialogue is tagged as dialogue. You can see that up here and music is tagged as music, and ambience is tagged as ambience. Now the thing is, we only had this auto duck function for dialogue and music, and a lot of our users were saying, well, you know, that's amazing, but a lot of times when there's ambient sound or sound design, uh, I wanna be able to duck the sound design too. So what users were doing was they figured out, well, I can just tag the sound design files as music, and then I would get that ducking option. But then they lost some of the additional music features that essential sound, or rather ambience features that essential sound gives you. So now you actually have the auto duck available when you tag things as ambience, right? So this is exactly what we did. So here's our ambience track. You can just kind of listen to it here. It's just a comp of all the sound design. And then when we look at essential sound, now you'll see, of course, you have your loudness auto match, your creative reverb, your stereo widening, and then ducking, all right? And to get this to work, it's so simple. There's literally three sliders here. Sensitivity, effectively that's your threshold to let it know where it should begin to start ducking the audio. The duck amount by how many decibels, okay? And this is all dynamic, meaning it's happening live in real time. Um, and it's Sensei doing this. It's analyzing our AI machine learning engine is analyzing the thresholds of your dialogue and the amplitude of your dialogue to automatically attenuate your ambience. So notice here, if I take the duck amount and I duck it, let's say by 10 dB, you see those little dotted lines there? You see what's happening inside the UI here? This is the duck. This is you keyframing, except that Adobe Sensei is doing it for you. So again, if I were to minimize this, now there's much less ducking happening, right? If I maximize it, now there's way more ducking happening. Real simple. All right, so let's do it by about 8 dB or so. And then the fade. The fade time is when the duck begins, so when someone starts talking, how long it takes to attenuate, to, to lower the volume, and then how long it takes to ramp the volume back up after they stop talking. And we just set this to an arbitrary value here of around a quarter of a second or 270 milliseconds. So if you just take a listen here, go into this section where there's a lot of activity, you can visually follow along here and listen to how that ambience ducks down when the dialogue comes in, all right? But in the heat of the battle, your bravery can run and hide. The fear creeps in. And sometimes it all feels a little bit too much. Oops. Okay. So you can visually see that. Now, you might be asking, that's awesome. What if I wanna make individual changes though? Maybe there's a section where I want the sound design to be louder or I want it to be even lower. Well, you will have noticed that there's a monitor clip changes button here. This actually should just be called Adobe Sensei because if you uncheck this box, now you will see that you have manual access to all of the keyframes. And as you hover over them, you'll see the decibel values. And of course you can add additional keyframes just by clicking. So if we wanted to say change this to have the sound design right here be louder, we can adjust those keyframes. Or if I want to attenuate it more here, or if I want to adjust the ramp of the fade, or what if I want to turn this, what if this is very linear, these are linear keyframes. What if I want to make this into Bezier's or a sinusoidal type of attenuation? 
if I right click on the keyframe, I can say spline curves, okay? Same as Bezier's for those of you not as familiar with audio. Turn on splines, and now you can see we have these very fluid, beautiful looking Bezier um, uh, keyframed curves here, all right? And this will maintain uh, throughout the process. Now, if you make manual changes, you are no longer using Sensei. So anything that you do, you're, you're changing what has already been created. If you wanna go back to Sensei, you can re-enable monitor clip changes, but then any of the changes that you made are lost because now Sensei is re-scanning, re-analyzing, and reconfiguring the duck automatically. Very smooth, Mikey, thank you very much. So, and you can see, by the way, it still maintained the spline curves, which is really cool here, all right? So, really nice to be able to do that. Um, I love this feature. Again, it's the same thing that you know from uh, uh, the Essential Sound music option. Incidentally, auto ducking of ambience, of course, is also supported in the Essential Sound panel in Premiere Pro as well. So ambience auto ducking, automatic speech alignment, and the new punch and roll option here in Audition CC 2019. Super cool, powerful features. Anything that you're doing with ADR, voiceover recording, just you know, recording singers, you know, punching. It's such a fundamental part of, of the process. A lot of people ask me too, like why even punch in digitally when you have unlimited tracks and you're basically making a new file anyway, just stick it on another track. Yeah, you can do that too. But now with punch and roll, you know, particularly because you have so many different uh, devices that can now control Audition, you can be, you know, for I do my voiceover, I'm the producer and engineer. I'm, I'm doing all of the punch again manually to fix the section that I need to do. And, you know, I've got an ISO booth over here. I can do the same over there via one of the um, Wi-Fi controllers for Audition, right? So I can be completely away from the screen and doing this and punching in and just to keep rolling and to, again, get that same tone, the same vibe, the same feeling, the same cadence. It's a really welcomed addition to Adobe Audition CC. All right, so let's bounce over to the chat for a couple minutes here, see if there's any questions. And if not, I will let you go on your way. All right, Mikey's saying, yep, yeah, Sensei would be a good starting point for ducking and make any changes thereafter. Absolutely, and that's the thing. Um, Sensei will always rescan and give you, uh, give you an animated keyframe curve like you saw there. Just remember that if you uncheck monitor clip changes, now you're in manual mode. So if you wanted to enable Sensei again, it doesn't keep the changes you made. Just keep that in mind. <laughs> One little thing there, all right? All right, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, hey, what's up, Ron Sussman? Timo Service, Elizabeth Losa. All right, Berat, super. Okay, very cool. All right, Coffee Grinds, how are you? All right, bouncing over to Facebook. Fiona, what's happening? Ambreen, hello. Slavic, hello. Touch Udom from Cambodia. Sergit. Nice. Marco, let's see. Manu AE was waiting for this one. Auto decking never seems to work for you. Well, that's odd. Um, again, you have to make sure that your files are all tagged, right? So if you only have the music tagged as music, but you've got lots of dialogue and they're not tagged as dialogue, it's not going to know what to do. Now, having said that, just keep in mind, because we actually give you a lot of flexibility with tagging. Just want to show you this real quickly. Um, the ducking has actually some very cool stuff in terms of duck options. So you'll see that by default, it'll duck against dialogue. That's kind of the traditional thing you would duck against. Now, whether this was music or ambience, you can tell it duck against dialogue or duck against music. So maybe you have the ambience duck against the music or duck against sound effects or Duck against, again, ambience clips here. We don't need to, we're not ducking ambience against ambience. That would be weird. Um, but you can also duck against, that's what this last one is here. Duck against clips that don't have any assigned audio type. So this is really cool. You know, if you've got tons of dialogue separated, like this one is a bit hard because again, if, if everything is untagged except your ambience stuff, it's gonna duck against everything. So there might be, you know, you don't you have to be careful if you're gonna use that one. But if you've got a session, let's say you just brought in stems of dialogue and you're working on the sound design and you're trying to do a mix, you could in fact do this without having to tag anything. The other thing to keep in mind, of course, is that uh, here, if we go back to this session, I think these clips might all be tagged already. So this may or may not work, but it, it doesn't matter. I can actually still show you. If you select a bunch of clips, I'm gonna clear, they are. So I'm gonna clear the audio type here. You can multi-select clips. Like I can select all of this. This is all sound effects or ambience. And I can tag them accordingly, 
all right, in one step. So it's not like you have to manually come in and tag things individually. We, we make it a lot easier for you. But just keep in mind that if it's not working for you, it's probably just a matter of adjusting that threshold setting, right? That's really, that's where the duck begins. So if the curve, if it's not identifying, if it's not seeing the dialogue or if it's not hearing the dialogue, yeah, it, it, it's not going to be able to duck against it. So you have to set that threshold to really kick it into gear, all right? Luis from Montreal, how are you? George, okay, this is an off-topic question. Is it possible to manipulate layers from an Illustrator file in Premiere directly? No. Short answer, no. Um, you have manipulation capabilities in After Effects, of course. After Effects will natively read and allow you to continuously rasterize and work in vector, but uh, no, you can't do that in Premiere, not yet. All right. Okay, Sarah Clevenger, this is really cool. Couldn't agree more. All right. What's up, Stan Arthur? Justin Brown, quick question, if you don't mind. When I export a session as Wave and then try to re-export after revision, it will not let me replace the original I exported. I must always rename the file. Hmm. Um, I, you should be able to overwrite it. In fact, it'll give you a pop-up that says, do you want to overwrite your original? Now, if the original is open in your session, I could see why it won't allow you to overwrite it, but you can absolutely overwrite a mix. I do this all the time or a session file itself. But if you're exporting as a, as a wave and you're like, oh no, I forgot something and I don't want to have to give it a you know, underscore 01A, it's underscore 01, you can absolutely overwrite that mix, no question. So it, if you had it open in the session, mid-edit or something, that would be the only reason it wouldn't allow you to do that. John Archer. Gilberto BG, he was your first After Effects teacher. Oh, very cool, all right. Mosin from Algeria, how are you? <laughs> Jared, how's it going, man? Thank you, Thomas. Michelle, uh, would the auto align work for singing or an instrumental solo or is it just for spoken words? Great question. So the truth is, um, yes, it can work for singing. Not really the design of the feature, right? It's speech alignment, not, not uh, vocal track alignment. There are other plugins that do that. Um, and the reason for it is because it can, again, if your time, you know, you may phrase something very differently. So as it's analyzing, it's going to try and get those attack transients into the same range or in the same place. I've tried it. Uh, I mean, it just, it depends. Like it can do amazing stuff and you'll be like, oh, perfect, awesome, great, done. Or, you know, one or the other. So not really by design, it's not meant for that. Can you use it for that? Sure, and you can absolutely try it and see what it does. Um, for something like that, that's probably where you'd wanna use that smoothest stretching option, right? Because we don't wanna hear any artifacting on our vocal. Um, it's just that the timings may get a little weird because that just by design, it's not really what that was made for, but you can totally do it. I'd be curious to know your experience with it. Uh, hey, Peter Carson from Ireland. Oh, very nice, thank you, welcome. Great to, great to have you here. Jamie Griffin, oh, thank you very much. I, uh, I stream with Wirecast, Wirecast 12.1, just new update and uh, on a very old MacBook Pro, but it's still it's still working. Tremaine Morgan, does ducking only work on ambient? So I already answered that. So it'll duck against anything. Um, and the function for ducking is available in the ambience tag and in the music tag, but it can duck against any type of audio, which is as you saw uh, before, okay? Peter, what would your starting point in decibels for music ducking be? Uh, you know, that's, it totally varies, right? Because it also depends on how loud, you know, how loud the music or ambience is mixed. So, you know, there isn't sort of a standard per se. In general, you know, and this is also based on the dialogue, right? Is the dialogue already sort of mixed and compressed and evened out, or is it very ambient and, and dynamic? Mm, a good starting point, 6 dB. Start at 6 dB. And if it's 6 dB, you're like, nope, it's not, the, the ambience or the music is too loud, 
try another three, nine. I usually, I usually start around six and then just kind of just go from there. I don't think in, in increments of three necessarily, but 6 dB is a good starting point because effectively that's, you're, you're attenuating by twice the amount uh, in decibels. So it should sound twice as soft, whatever that music or ambience was. Start there and then, you know, keep going. All right. Stephanie Reed, editing five to six video and audio and graphics on this glorious day. Stephanie, you, you never cease to amaze me. Amy Schiavo, how are you doing? Great to see you. Bobby, hello, thank you so much. All right, let's bounce over to YouTube lastly. Voice of Descent. You wanna see a demo of me singing up some death metal? Ooh, there was a time. It's not my typical style. I am multi-stylistic, but I don't typically do that. But I do have a couple of tracks that I did in the kind of voice. Um, which is, <laughs> maybe that's more hardcore, I don't know. A lot of screaming in it though, you, would, you might dig it. So maybe one of these days. I may have shown some of that on our Twitch streams years ago, I can't remember. All right, uh, Samantha38G, what is up? Nice to see you. All right, CL, Karen Brisa, so nice to see you. Marin, all right. SMT, thank you very much. All right. Hold up three fingers. Nice. Okay. All right. Nothing else here. Very cool. Rock on for my life. Very nice. Okay. Uh, late night Lyle. Okay. But can I make manual changes and then highlight a section and let sensei auto duck the section without changing what I've no. No, if it's a different clip, so the way the way to uh, the way to combat that is if there was a section that you don't want Sensei to do, cut like I showed you before with Auto Speech Align. Cut that. Just create two little cuts on the beginning and end of wherever it is that you want it to be, because now that's an individual clip. You can disable ducking on that clip, or conversely, you could enable ducking on that clip and disable it on the others. But if it's all one thing, duck is, sensei is either on or off. It doesn't matter. Ooh, whoop, there goes my phone. It doesn't matter what the selection is. So if you want to do something like that, it's just a matter of splitting, you know, left and right of where you want to be, and then you can disable or enable however you, however you feel, all right? Sam, Samantha, it's so nice to see you. Thanks so much, and thank you everyone for joining me. Looks like that's all the questions we have here. What's up, Lassie Brian? All right. All right, and Pravin Vitakar, after Automatch, how to remove noise. For that, I would highly recommend going to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jason Levine video, and you can check out my Audio 101 series where I have a ridiculous, ridiculously thorough um, tutorial on removing noise. All right, I think it's episode three or four, so you can check out, I just put it in the chat there on Facebook, you can check that out, and uh, lots of, Lots of stuff there. All right, everyone, thanks again for joining me. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, where am I tomorrow? I think I'm on the Creative Cloud Facebook page. Let's see, Thursday. Yes, so tomorrow we're on Creative Cloud at noon. And tomorrow it's again back from NAB, deep diving into what's new with motion graphics templates, rulers and guides, and Adobe Stock. So if any of that is stuff that you're doing or maybe you just wanna see what's new, you haven't upgraded yet, or you're curious about motion graphics templates and what Adobe Stock is all about, check out tomorrow's stream, noon Pacific time, on the Creative Cloud Facebook page, as well as on Twitter, Periscope, and YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.